welcome to MTN Outdoors. What are you doing here? That does seem like a great episode. I can't wait to see it. But you know the rules. Get off my property and stay at least 200 yards away from me and my family. If I see you again, I'm calling the cops. Merry Christmas, creep. Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks says as grizzly bears expand their presence across Montana, it's important to have an updated plan to guide management while the species remains listed as threatened and lay out a future policy in case grizzlies are eventually federally delisted. The draft plan calls grizzlies a species that will always require intensive management, and one prone to conflict. Until now, the state has had two separate plans, one for western Montana and one for southwest Montana. But leaders say grizzlies now occupy many areas outside the original recovery zones, so it's time for a statewide policy. The plan doesn't set a statewide population goal. FWP argues grizzlies have reached their recovery targets in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem and the northern continental divide and they support plans for reaching the goal in the Cabinet Yak area. The plan says they'll support connectivity between those populations, but they'll be ready to recommend controls on bears in areas that don't contribute to that when conflicts occur, particularly east of the identified habitats. FWP also said if grizzlies are delisted, they'll be prepared to consider a quote, small in scope hunting season, though they acknowledged not all Montanans would be supportive of the plan. They said any hunting would be in line with their commitment to maintain a thriving population of grizzlies. FWP is set to answer questions about the plan at an online webinar on December 15th. They'll be accepting public comments online through January 5th. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. And as it turns out, wildlife management doesn't end quite when you hit the concrete. I don't know if you've noticed this, but uh, urban deer have made themselves quite comfortable in towns all across the state. And now Helena is doing something about it. Tom Buchanan has our story. If you've taken a walk through the neighborhoods of Helena recently, you may have been joined by some unintended walking partners. With one of the biggest deer populations seen in Helena since the program's inception, Helena Police Department has begun the months-long process of deer culling. In October, a survey was done of the area's urban deer population. The density per square mile coming back at 64 deer per square mile this year and it nor in the socially tolerable distance on the upper side is 25 deer per square mile. It's also up from last year's estimate of around 40 deer per square mile. To bring the population down, traps will be set to capture deer and they will be killed. Based on this year's population estimate, Helena Police Department and Fish, Wildlife and Parks will remove 250 deer. It's among the highest number ever for the program. Chief of Police Brett Petty says this program is important for keeping the population within acceptable limits and limiting conflict between people and the deer. I think it shows that there are a lot of deer coming in and out of the city limits and I, it just it makes it tough for not only residents but vehicular traffic and not only on the people but as the deer as well you know to freely move around. While the deer will be killed they won't go to waste. Any deer killed will be processed for meat and donated to Helena Food Share to provide food for the community. The program will run from December 5th to March 31st. Reporting in Helena, Tom Buchanan, MTN News. Elsewhere in the capital city, the tradition of decorating trees along some of our more popular hiking trails has really taken off in the past few years. But what started out as a fun thing to do with the family during the winter has quickly
quickly turned into a headache. There is a solution though, and for those answers, we'll send things back to Tom Buchanan. In years past, the decoration of trees along the trails on Mount Ascension and Mount Helena have created a bit of a litter problem. But this year, the city of Helena is working to keep the Christmas spirit alive with the goal of keeping the areas free from litter. The city wants to stay in the spirit of Christmas and um, we're excited to have people decorate. We just want to put some sideboards on it and try to keep it in these two areas. Designated decoration trees with orange flags have popped up along some popular hiking trails on the city's open land system. One area is on Mount Ascension near the Beatty Street Trailhead and the other on Mount Helena near the Mount Helena parking lot. Well, we chose the area on Mount Ascension because it had been the most popular area and then we just picked a logical site on Mount Helena that was real accessible for everyone. This is in response to randomly decorated trees throughout the mountains around town and the subsequent littering that can occur. Officials found that many of the decorated trees weren't being cleaned up after the holidays. For example, last year more than 30 trees were decorated. The city says they had to clean up many of them. The reason we've asked people to stick to these areas is if we come in up here after the 8th of January and the decorations are not removed, at least we don't have to canvas the entire mountain looking for decorations. That's why they're trying this new approach. It's a way to keep the decorated trees consolidated for easy cleanup while still celebrating the holidays. The city is asking that no glass ornaments or tinsel be hung up. They highly encourage biodegradable decorations, like dried cranberries. The city is asking that all decorations be cleaned up by January 8th. Reporting in Helena, Tom Buchanan, MTN News. And stick around, everybody, because when we come back, we'll head out here to the hard water and see how ice anglers are getting a little refresher course on how to catch some fish, stay safe, and have a little bit of fun this winter. There's plenty more MTN Outdoors to come right after this. Welcome back, everybody. As temperatures continue to absolutely plummet all across the state, a lot of people out there are starting to think about ice fishing. And as bodies of water like Lake Helena here start to really freeze over, now is the perfect time to brush up on some of those ice fishing basics, including ice fishing safety. And it's also a good time to remember that our first responders are doing the same thing. MTN's Keanu Wilson starts things off for us. Ice fishing is a tradition that families across Montana enjoy. It's fun to get out and experience the Montana winter, but there are many things to learn before you head out to the lake. Safety is so important when it comes to ice fishing or anything outdoors. You owe it to yourself and your family to take the time and think about it and prepare and prep. Safety and gear seminars, like the one held at Snappy Sports Center in Kalispell, are a free way to learn all you need to know about fishing. I think it's important because it helps educate uh, the community. Um, also, you know, Montana has awesome resources and starting with its water tributaries. It, it's there for our use. It's Montanans and that's what it's there for. And we should utilize it as much as we can. The biggest safety concern with ice fishing is the thickness of the ice. Fishermen can utilize online resources as well as local fishing shops to check ice conditions before heading out. If you're going with the family, most importantly, make sure they're going to be comfortable and warm. Fishing can be as competitive as you want it to be, but most importantly, make it fun for everybody in the family and, and enjoy it. Whether you're out there making snowmen or having snowball fights or whatever, just have fun out there and enjoy it. Fishing is a great family pastime and a way to get kids excited about the outdoors, even during the winter. Favorite my part of fishing is you can catch fish and you can keep them, you can eat them, and you can let it go. And one time you can catch a big fish and you can, and, and you can let them go. It's, it's, it's fun to catch some big fish. While fishing can be a serious sport, sometimes it's just about the bite. I do not discriminate against any fish that wants to bite my line. In Kalispell, Kiana Wilson, MTN News. At Spring Meadow Lake on Tuesday, Helena firefighters practiced the critical skills necessary to quickly and safely navigate the ice in an event of a winter rescue. With all the proper safety equipment, Helena firefighters took turns jumping into the frozen lake and pulling each other out to safety. We, we train things in a consistent way and coach our, our members to do things a certain way so that um, when it comes time to do it, they remember it, 
the pressure doesn't take away their ability to do the work. Ice rescues are not common. Making this type of yearly training critical is to keep their skills sharp. It's, it's an infrequent uh, thing that happens, but super dangerous. Um, there's a lot of time when you hit the cold water to get you out of there, so we need to be ready. There are some things you can do to increase your chances of survival if you do fall through the ice. You need to hang on to the edge of the ice the best you can and, um, you know, so that we can, so, so you stay above the water. We want you to stay above. Battalion Chief Corey O'Brien says that checking the weather and ice is a must if you're doing anything over a large body of water. Spring Meadow Lake, for, for example, has springs underneath it and it'll make thin spots in different parts of the lake so you just need to be aware that ice conditions are changing depending on the weather it doesn't necessarily mean that because it's cold like it is now that the ice is thick and that goes for all the other water ways around helena the helena fire department does this training every winter to make sure they refresh their memory on their ice rescue routine in helena ryan berg mtn news and if your winter activities don't involve the ice, then maybe the mountains are more your style. And MTN's Sean Wells has you covered. First, with a preview of Blacktail Mountain ski season, which actually kicked off last weekend, before he skates on over to Whitefish to see just how important that ski resort is to the town's economy. It's Christmas Eve for skiers and snowboarders at Blacktail Mountain Ski Area as the mountain officially opens up on Saturday, one of the earliest opening days on record. Conditions are excellent. It's been a long time since we've opened with this much snow. We're really excited about it. Um, it's been 10 years. I looked it up, but 10 years ago we opened on December 10th, and here we go again in our 25th season. We're going to get an early opening, so we're excited. Blacktail Mountain Ski Area General Manager Jesse Wood says only the Olympic and Thunderhead chairlifts as well as the handle tow will be running this weekend. She expects full operation by next week. The following Friday the 16th, we'll open up the whole mountain. We'll go 100%. Jesse says one new item this year will be a reloadable lift ticket with the hope of getting skiers on the hill as quick as possible. Once you have that card, you can skip the lines entirely, load your card online, and go skiing. So um, we've done a lot of things to try to improve the experience here and continue to be the place with no lines. With no man-made snow, Blacktail relies on Mother Nature to get the job done. The upside down mountain gives us the ability to open. You know, because we're at the top and going down, the best snow's at the top. And we have a midway station at Thunderhead, so we can open just the top half of our ski area and still be skiing on good snow. Jesse says 25 years in business wouldn't be possible without the passionate skiers and boarders that call Blacktail home. We are a community ski area and we feel the love of this community um, in a big way. At Blacktail Mountain Ski Area, Sean Wells, MTA News. Opening day on the mountain means another busy season starts in downtown Whitefish as hotels, bars, and restaurants see an uptick in visitors. We are seen by many as a summertime resort. Certainly that's when we just run full tilt. Um, the last couple months have been you know, what we call our off season, you know, our slow season, but things kick back into gear again this week. Whitefish Chamber of Commerce Executive Director Kevin Gartland says it's always a welcoming sight to see Whitefish Mountain Resort up and running for the ski season, attracting visitors from around the world. Our, our hotels, restaurants, and, and retailers depend on other skiers who are coming to Whitefish to ski for two, three, four, seven days, and, uh, and that's what we're really looking forward to this year. Edna White, Director of Sales and Marketing for Averill Hospitalities, working for both Whitefish Lake Lodge and the Firebrand Hotel, Hotel, says skiers and snowboarders make up the majority of guests during the winter months. Well, the significance of first day of ski season is really the kickoff of winter and when we start to see a lot more visitors in the area. Uh, we uh, have a lot of skiers here at the lodge and we have a lot of visitors that come specifically for that purpose as well. Gartland says a strong snow season goes a long way in boosting the local economy, attracting visitors to enjoy downtown and stay overnight. In, in the shoulder season, they're running 20, 30 percent occupancy. In the summertime, they run 100 percent occupancy. If we did not have the resort there to attract folks to our area, didn't have that attraction, they'd be running in the, in, in the low digits, let me assure you. So it's, uh, it's critical that we have a, a good snow season in terms of snow on the mountain, but also in terms of skiers as well. In Whitefish, Sean Wells, MTN News. Before we thought it was, oh, 20 kilometers long, we discovered just this year that it's two and a half times bigger, 2.5 times. 
It's 90 kilometers long. We all know that Yellowstone sits on top of a supervolcano. So when we come back, we'll take a look at the possibility of a future eruption and see what is potentially even more dangerous. There's plenty more MTN Outdoors to come right after this. Welcome back to MTN Outdoors, everybody. As we gather with friends and loved ones this holiday season, it's important for all of us to remember that Yellowstone sits on top of a supervolcano. Penny Preston explores the potential dangers of a future eruption. Yellowstone was created as the world's first national park in 1872 because Congress was impressed with its amazing and scenic thermal features. Indeed, Yellowstone has the largest concentration of thermals in the world, and people come from all over the world to see them still. The geysers, fumaroles, and hot springs are part of one of the world's largest active supervolcanoes. Dr. Robert Smith is considered a leading expert on Yellowstone's supervolcano. He started studying Yellowstone's geology in the 50s. He is the only person to photograph from the air the world's tallest geyser, Steamboat, as it erupted. It was July 6, 1984. Smith says his plane was running out of fuel and he was about to return to West Yellowstone when he took the picture of the eruption. And that's a very spectacular picture because it shows the hot water height to about 500 feet and then the steam height to about another 500 feet and there was a mist cloud another 500 feet above that. When Smith's studies revealed the magma pool beneath the supervolcano was much larger than previously thought. Before we thought it was oh, 20 kilometers long, we discovered just this year that it's two and a half times bigger, 2.5 times. It's 90 kilometers long. People were concerned it meant the supervolcano might erupt again sooner than previously thought. In several interviews, right. Dr. Smith so we, said it again and again. The probability of a large giant eruption, super eruptions, is 0.00014% per year. So dying from the big one is not likely anytime soon. But Smith pointed out Yellowstone area geological features can kill. How? It's earthquakes. Dr. Smith says a magnitude 7 earthquake hits the area every 700 to 1,000 years. 1959, the Hebgen Lake earthquake ruptured only a fault was 40 kilometers long. It killed 28 people. But these things dominate the hazard. They are 95% of the total risk of Yellowstone. For MTN News, I'm Penny Preston reporting with Yellowstone Revealed. Well, for many of us not in the ag production industry, right now might seem like the perfect downtime for our farmers. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Because when there's snow on the ground, they're making sure all their equipment is ready to go for next year. MTN's Ryan Gamboa has our story. Farming is the backbone of the state, and a combine like this one is vital to having a successful harvest. But before the spring rolls around, it's important to ensure that your equipment is running properly. And a sprayer like this, they, they range, but it's close to like $600,000 is the investment on one of these machines. Ahead of the spring season, Tad Beckman of Frontline Ag Solutions says getting equipment into the shop early is best as dealers fight to find parts. With what COVID has done to us, with the world it's created, we have machine constraints, parts constraints. So planning ahead, being proactive rather than reactive, Bring them in now so if we have problems with parts, it's out there. Every manufacturer is having problems with parts. Belts and chains are common fixes on combines and sprayers, along with maintaining a layer of grease on moving parts. Craig Raymond is a service technician. He inspects from front to rear. Test a lot of the functions. Uh, we mostly we look at all the belts, chains. We check a lot of the gear train um, just to make sure everything's working so that when they bring it out in the field, they're going to be ready to go. Being stuck in the shop is a concern as inflation's hit the service department. A full inspection of eight different filters and fresh oil in 2021 ranged from eight to nine hundred dollars. 
This year, that price is shy of $1,100. Manufacturers of all colors offer promotions in the off-season. This time of year, especially, there's programs, there's financing programs, there's parts discount programs, there's buy one, get ones, deals on winter specials for rebuilding these machines. It's time to take oper or advantage of those opportunities. With a bottom line goal, we're producing food. We have to feed America. We have to feed the world. That's what this is about. In Great Falls, Ryan Gamboa, MTN News. Well, that should just about do it for me here this week, everybody. Thank you for making me a part of your evening. I really appreciate it. And please send those photos my way of you enjoying the winter here in Montana. Going skiing with the family? Send me a picture. Ice fishing? Send me a picture. Building a snowman, send me a picture. Decorating one of these trees, send me a picture. Send it all to andy.curtis at ktvh.com and you could find yourself at the end of a future episode just like these lucky people. It's this week's MTN Outdoors Brag Board. We'll start things off tonight with this very cool picture taken by Eli and sent in to us by PJ. Doing a little ice skating out there at Canyon Ferry Lake earlier this month. I've done it. I've seen it. That's a great experience and an even better photo. Thanks for sending this in. And please make sure you stay safe out there and always check the ice conditions before heading out. We've got a lot of great resources on how you can do that on our website, ktvh.com. And last week, I asked for any hunting photos that might be better than the picture of my whitetail buck that I showed. And I think we just might have a contender here. This monster was sent in to me by Darla of her daughter's book. Very, very impressive. Please let me know how you cooked up those back straps. And we'll round things out here tonight with a picture of my buddy Coulter with his very first fish. Congratulations, buddy. You can see me in the background of the picture here giving the thumbs up. And I'll never forget how scared Coulter was to touch this fish once we got it in the boat. But as you can see, he quickly got over that fear for this nice grip and grin. Thanks everybody for sending in those pictures and please keep them coming to andy.curtis at ktvh.com. Remember, as long as it happens outside, no roof. You could be in uh, four walls, but if there's no roof over your head, you qualify for the MTN Outdoors Brag Board. Send them my way to andy.curtis at ktvh.com. And remember that open challenge stands. If you think you have better hunting and fishing photos than me, prove it. Send them my way, and you can see them at the end of a future episode. Until next week, everybody, stay safe, stay warm, and I'll see you out there. MTN, Montana's news leader.